get this thing cracking. All right, what is happening? All right. What is happening, family? How y'all doing? Can y'all hear me? Is the sound, the audio good? No, no puppet. People are like, is this nigga going to bring out a puppet? No puppet. No puppet. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm going to talk a little bit about Umoist. A little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about Umoist, but we're not going to spend, but well, we're going to spend a little time on it. But the real focus, we're going to talk about the melanoid community. That's, I really want to focus on that and their relationship to the Umois types that's out here. You dig? So that's really what I want to focus on. We're going to talk a little bit about Umois, um, a.k.a. Papa, a.k.a. the prince or the pimp of PayPal, because that's what Papa means. It's the pimp of PayPal. But I want to address a lot of things. The 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 roast that I did of, of no sound. Wait, how am I? Am I good? Can y'all hear me? Somebody said no sound. Sounds good? Okay, somebody said there was no sound, so we're good. What's up, Coon Raider? You say, why Tariq have all-white film crew? Well, that's what Umois, Umois is using crispy talking points. Umois is desperate, and that's why I almost feel pity for him to a certain degree. I mean, his his... His comebacks now are just real weak, and it's like, okay. And people are like, hey, you're abusing him now, Tariq. People are like, oh, you're abusing him at this point. And I get it. it looking at, he posted some real weak fucking comebacks. He posted some shit that I posted on my page where I'm clowning myself about my, you know, when I had the fucked up haircut in the UK. He's posting that like that's a clap back. I'm like, okay, he's he's run out of steam now. So I now was just beating up on a corpse at this point. You dig? Yeah, you don't have to mention Chris. Of course, Crispy is gonna try to you know get some hits on his damn page. Of course, I mean that's what a Crispy Coon will do. But you know, Umoist, the pimp of PayPal, he's using Crispy talking points. Why are you calling somebody crispy because of their skin? That's a crispy talking point. Umoist, you were talking about somebody's skin. I'm not talking about nobody's skin. I'm just talking about an ashy bitch nigga. But if I was, uh, you couldn't do shit about it. But wine, you dig? But Umoist, you were talking about Sara Sutinsetti's skin. You called the man an albino midget and all this old bullshit. You were talking about that man's skin. You got that color thing going on, that color... That color hatred thing going on. That's probably why Umar got some shit. A lot of bad blood between him and his dad. His dad is a light-skinned dude with light eyes. And shout out to Sir Johnson the Elder. He seems like a very good dude. That might have something to do with it. But I digress. But I digress. And I got my Freeway shirt on. Shout out to Freeway Rick. Shout out to Rick. I got to have Freeway Rick on ISM Radio pretty soon. Man. Man. But that whole talking point, you hired white people to work for you. First of all, when we did the first Hidden Colors, both my cameramen were black. As a matter of fact, when we did the first Hidden Colors, Ron Johnson was the brother who filmed when I filmed Umar. Ron Johnson is black. Richard Hillary, my other camera guy who traveled all around with me, he's black. So black people did most of the filming for Hidden Colors 1. We got one guy in Cincinnati locally because I filmed Shahrazad Ali out there. But that's neither here nor there. These are just deflections, by the way. They're, they're looking for anything. So these are this is just, you know, whatever. I don't even have to dignify no stupid shit like that. But the thing is, and I'm going to talk about business tomorrow on Dr. Boyce's program. What's up, Ola? We got Ola in the house. We got Ola in the house. See, all of these are deflections. I can, these are deflections. Because I want to talk about business and how to run businesses. And we're going to talk about that on the business school with Dr. Boyce Watkins tomorrow. But 
for the record, I do hire black and white people. And the operative word is, well, the operative phrase is work for me. I don't work for them. You're going to either have people in the dominant society make you work for them or they're going to work for you. There's two things. You're going to work for them or they're going to work for you. I want them to work for me if it's going to be that type of exchange. But we're going to discuss all that. We're going to discuss that part of business tomorrow. I want black folks to really tune in to really get that game. Umar Johnson, Umoist Johnson, and you can tell by the dusty nigga talking points that he used, <laughs> ain't no black folks. That's the nigga who has never, ever, ever, ever run a legitimate business. That's dusty ass nigga talk. When you talk about, that's that shit like in Do the Right Thing, you looking at the wall, hey, come, ain't no black folks on your wall. That's just dusty-ass nigga talk. Where's the school? See, always go back to the, where's that damn school. Where's the fucking school? Where's the school? Where is the school? You dig? What's up, Buffalo Soldier? I see you trolling. Umar Johnson, the reason why, and, and I'm going to get on black folks in a minute. I want to really talk to the family. I really want to talk to the family. But the thing is, this dude's a pathological lie. He tried to lie on Ola. He did a, a, I didn't watch his whole stream the other night because when I saw some of the shit he was talking about, okay, I'm like, he's just talking crispy shit. Oh, I cut that shit off. I didn't listen to all of it because he ain't got no argument. When you start using crispy talking points, you ain't got no argument. When you wrote a book about pimping, the minute somebody says you, Tariq wrote a book about pimping, they ain't got no argument right there. Right there, you about to hear a whole bunch of straw man bullshit. If you hear somebody say some shit, well, he wrote books about pimping and macking, that means they got no goddamn argument. They got nothing. So they're just building up some straw man bullshit right there. My dude's a pathological liar. I'm not going to sit up and just keep debunking every lie this nigga says. I'm a descendant of Frederick Douglass. I'm a descendant of Florida Evans. I'm a descendant of Gladys Knight. I'm a descendant of Ronald McDonald. <laughs> but Umoy said some shit in his whole thing now he's talking about how he made Hidden Colors pop off how he didn't know what the movie was about he said he didn't know what the name of the movie was until after the movie came out he didn't even know the name of the movie you dig? And I'm like, what, what was the purpose of that lie? I'm like, what was the purpose of that fucking lie? That's just a bold-faced lie. Almost implying that he came up with the term hidden colors. The way he was sounding, I'm like, what, where's that lie going? What's that lie? Where, where, where are you going with that lie? <laughs> and Ola hit me up like, Ola was like, hey, you know I got receipts. I got emails I sent this nigga. <laughs> All of a sudden, in the email, we got the email. We talk, In the email, we and I posted it on um, Instagram. Hey, Ola sent an email to him and other people because we were looking for other people too. It wasn't just him. That was another thing. He was making it seem like he thought it was just going to be him in the movie. And Ola was like, hey, we got a movie we're working on with Tariq Nasheed called Hidden Colors. The untold um, story about Moors and Aboriginal people of African descent. And these are the things we're talking about. We even had a list of everything that we're talking about in the movie. We had the, I had the movie already written out. And then he responded, yes, I'm very interested. That nigga was thirsty. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't doing shit else. What the fuck was he doing? He wasn't doing shit. So we posted the receipts and proved again of just another lie, just another one of his fucking lies debunked. I mean, this nigga, I'm, he's the type of nigga, he's trying his best to deflect. 
Somebody said, why was Tim Wise involved? We initially, I gave Ola a list of people. It was a whole long list of different people that we wanted in the movie. Tim Wise was one of them because back then I thought Tim Wise was very thorough. Tim, he wasn't in the movie, but we sent him an email because we were going to try to get him in the movie. When I was with Dr. Welsing, I had a conversation with her. God bless her. That is my beloved queen mother. Love her to life. Love her to life. Rest in peace. And Dr. Welsing told me that, that Tim Wise was kind of shitting on her a little bit. She said, Tim Wise, you know, dissed her, said that um, Dr. Welsing's work was, was psycho babble bullshit or something like that. So he immediately, I ain't fucking with you. I ain't fucking with him. No, I'm damn cool. When she told me that, no, that's that's it. Yeah, when Dr. Welsing told me that, it don't know. Nah. If you disrespect one of the elders like that, nah, you got to go. So, yeah, we didn't, we didn't fuck with him like that. Man. But now Umar is going, he's talking, he, he's desperate for a talking point. Now he's talking about we plagiarize in, hidden colors from him. Said so we interviewed him and then plagiarized the shit. I mean, this nigga's desperate for a fuck. This is a nigga who sound like he's on crack. He's talking about, re release the footage. I ain't about to start jumping through hoops for your fucking lies. You, nigga, get the fuck out of here. I'm about to release my footage that I own because of some stupid ass lies you talking about. Umois, what did we plagiarize from you? Just have, ask them that. Fuck all that. I ain't about to upload no damn three hours of fucking footage and the fuck out of here. What did we plagiarize? Nothing. This is a straw man. Where's the school? After you ask them that, ask them where's the fucking school. See, all of this is to get you away from where's that damn school that's non-existent, that's never going to get built. You understand? That's what it all boils down to. Well, let me see what's going on in my chat room. Hold on. Chat room is a little janky. Hold on. There we go. There we go. But, yeah, but I didn't have Tim Wise in the movie. I didn't, I didn't work with Tim Wise, but that's neither here nor there. But, and look, you guys... Some of my diehard long-term listeners, you guys were right here when I talked about the movie. I talked about Hidden Colors, what it was going to be about. We sat here right here, came up with the name right here on Ustream back in 2010. If you guys listen to me back then, I sat here and told people what the movie was going to be about. To do a documentary, you have to write everything out. You have to write it out like a book. And everybody is asked the same questions. And I already know the answer. That's how documentaries work. You don't do a documentary where you don't know what the shit is about. You know what it's about. You already know the answers. And you get people to articulate the answers you know in a unique way. That's how documentaries are made. But not according to Umoist Papa... Bumpy Johnson, according to him, it's all about me. He plagiarized me and only used 20 minutes of my footage. Okay. And that's just a nigga desperate for an argument. And, and I kind of feel sorry for him to a little bit. A little bit because he's desperate now. And, you know, when you see a weak, desperate ass nigga just do anything because you know he knows he's falling the fuck off. He know he's done. You dig? But fuck them. Fuck them, though. You dig? Oh, we had the receipts. He, he, yeah, and a lot of y'all are disappointed by him. I get it. I get that. But the thing is, you know what it is that really, and a lot of people are confused. Why did Umar come at you like that? Why did Umar come at you like that, Tariq? What was that about? And Umar, was, he was looking for an opening to insult me publicly, to kind of get attention away from that non-existent school that he scammed everybody out of their money for. And he was always looking for a way to insult me publicly 
so that that can be used as a deflection. He's always taking shots at me thinking that I was going to respond and I never responded to him. I just never responded. I heard his, some of his first insults, I thought it was joking. I'm like, why would he say that? But then I found out, okay, that nigga's really fucked up like that. And you know what it is with Umar. You know what it is. Umar has been a failure all of his life. And I want you to listen to this, Papa, because I'm going to psychoanalyze your little herpes mouth ass. Umar's been a failure all of his fucking life. Umar was running around Philly with that whole thing. I'm a kinsman of Harry Frederick Douglas! All that bullshit. That nigga's a failure all his fucking life. That nigga's a lifelong fucking failure. Child support cases, all fucked up shit with his baby moms, all that. But articulate dude. Articulate dude, but a fucking failure. Oh yeah, that money shame and shit. Umar's been a lifelong fucking failure. A lifelong failure. Just just be real. Some niggas are just failures. Man. And the thing is, even look, when I went out there to interview Umar in Philadelphia with Ron Johnson, the black cameraman, by the way, Umar had us meet him at this dilapidated fucking office. Office. And I'm using office in very loose terms. Because when we got there, it was like a storage unit, basically. You're like, oh, I haven't been here in a while. So it wasn't, it was basically a big, junky fucking storage place. Office? Now, office is, it's kind of hard to, to, to call this place an office. But it was a, a facility with a bunch of junk in it, like a like I was in an episode of Good Times, and his fat ass was Florida Evans. It was a struggle office, <laughs> so we're in this junky fucking place. Okay, I'm no, I ain't tripping on that. So you see that he wasn't nothing really popping with this dude. You dig? I'm gonna get on that in a minute. He said, "How come I didn't tell people he was a fraud ass bitch nigga?" Well. <sighs> I, we found that out later, but I'll get into that in a minute. We get on, get into that in a minute. He had the family, yeah. And back then, he was doing that whole, Frederick Douglass, I'm a descendant of Frederick Douglass. All, he was doing all that then. In this family tree, there's a there's cousin Hattie, thr thrice removed. There's my cousin Kim, whose auntie and uncle is my third cousin, Thrice removed, and uh, notice I didn't put none of that bullshit in the movie. It sounded like bullshit then. <laughs> notice I didn't put none of that Frederick Douglass. He was doing a, uh, about an hour of that Frederick Douglass bullshit. <laughs> I'm like, all right, nigga, just keep the camera rolling. Well, I'm deleting this bullshit. This don't sound right, but Lord. <laughs> he had the whole full bullshit family tree. All right, it, it's a, I'm a I'm a hustler, so I kind of know niggas when it's some you know, when something don't sound right. That didn't sound right. I knew then someone right with that. But when he was talking about the schools and and oh, okay, that's some good shit. That that's good right there. But that old Frederick Douglass shit, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but. The thing is, when the movie came out, man, that's that was Umar's come up. That was Umar's come up. So you got this um, little dusty ass nigga who ain't never ran no business, never really did anything successful, still hasn't, other than scam money. Umar's never got no real money legitimately. Let's just tell the truth. I didn't gave this nigga an alley oop. A lot of people who've been in the film, they know how to parlay that because they got they have character, so they know how to parlay that. They know how to do legitimate business. They know how to go out there and use that as a vehicle to really get some other shit popping. That's that's what you're supposed to do. 
when you do anything in the media, when you're featured on something in the media, I'm just, we're talking game here. We're talking game. I'm just talking game so people can learn. So people can learn here. Like, for example, when I would do stuff on VH1, MTV, they give you a thousand here, maybe 500 bucks there. You don't get a lot of money in television. My man Charlie Murphy, when he was on Chappelle's show, he got 500 bucks an episode. So if you are a featured speaker somewhere, you get 500 here. 600, that's standard. That's standard money to be featured in something. You just on cam camera talent. That's standard. So he's going around, hey, you only gave me $500. Nigga, that's what feature talent gets, all right? But he think he, he should have gotten more because he's a descendant of Harry Tubman. He's a descendant of Kunta Kinte. But... You use vehicles. Well, let me put my fan on. Y'all don't let me know if my fan is too loud. Hold on. All right, let me know if my fan is too loud. But I would always use my television appearances. That little 500, 1,000, or whatever they would give me to be on these shows, I'm going to trip on that. I would use that as a vehicle to promote other shit that I have, like my books, stuff like that. I would use it to promote product. I use it as a commercial, then I parlay that. You get the name out there. All you got to do is promote my shit. I'm going to go out there and make it work. You're not going to go to the studio and be like, hey, I made your show hot. Give me some more money. You, you owe me. What the fuck you talking about? That's just nigga shit right there. And don't y'all fall for that. Don't y'all fall for that type of mentality. Happy New Year to you guys out there. It's almost New Year's in certain cities. But the thing is, Uma's going around and he's eating off the Hidden Colors series that I created. And, you know, when, when you think of Hidden Colors, that's kind of synonymous with me. It takes a lot of work to do these films. It takes a lot of work, takes a lot of hard, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. It takes a lot of planning, takes a lot of promoting, takes a lot of strategizing. It takes a lot. And I know how to market and promote and strategize. I know how to do that. Shout out to my man Ola. Ola knows it's a lot of fucking work. You just don't sit up and do an interview and you're supposed to be, if this shit is all about me, you just sat down for a couple of hours. Now the shit is about you, nigga. We be working on this shit every day, every fucking day, for hours a day, for a year or more. Every single day, hours, I mean, putting in work. You dig? And when Umoys goes around now doing lectures, people remind him who the fuck put him on. And that burns his soul. He wants to believe that he's this great nigga, that he's that dude. I'm number one. I am the best. I am, I am the shit. I'm Big Papa. And you know what happens when somebody walks up to him and crushes that shit? Hey, Umar, when the next Hidden Colors coming out? It's all about Papa. That's what it is. Umar, I know, I know you're listening, but Umar, don't that shit fuck you up everywhere you go? Everywhere you go. All that yelling and screaming and Big Papa shit you doing. And when you get off stage, hey, Umar, when you and Tariq going to be working on another Hidden Colors? They throw it in your fucking face every fucking day, Umar. Every day, people are reminding you who your daddy is. And your daddy is me, Umar. You're not Papa, Umar. I'm your Papa. You eating off me, Umar. You eating off Tariq Nasheed, Umar, and I'm looking, looking, I want you to look me in the eyes. I'm, you, and you say it, just say it, and get that shit off your chest. Don't fight it. I've been eating off Tariq Nasheed. Just say that shit, dude. Say it. I've been eating off Tariq Nasheed for years. I ain't eating off fucking Umar. I got two movies out now, Umar. You ain't in them. That's number one. You ain't in them. That's the shit that burns your soul, Umar. Everywhere you go, when I go places, ain't nobody asking about no fucking Umar. <laughs> they gonna ask about what your non-existent school, <laughs> or when they ask, hey, where that money he stole? 
That's what they ask me if your name come up. Where's that fucking money he stole? But, but, I'm your daddy, Umar. You're just one of my little ejaculated semen that's swimming out there, buddy. You know that. See, Umar thinks he can, you know, somebody in the chat room said it, said it right. Umar does all that tough talk on the internet. That shit don't work on me. All that, you say my name again. I've been saying your name all day. That, and that's kind of why I've been going in on his ass a little bit. And I've still been going on because he's got that. If you say my name, there's going to be some consequences. You say my name, I'm saying your name. Keep saying your name as long as I motherfucking feel like it. And you ain't going to do shit. You ain't going to do a goddamn thing but sit up there wallowing your fat ass in envy. You're going to be sitting there wallowing in envy, Umar. Because the thing is, you've never made any money legitimately. And you see me doing very well. Legit as shit. I got several successful projects, businesses, properties. Nobody's ever... Come out and said, I scammed him. I got a very good record of working with people. But you, Umar, everybody you deal with is clowning you. Everybody who you've dealt with in your life is shitting on you, man. There's something to that, and you know it. You know that you fucked up like that. You fucked up ass nigga who's like mad at the world. You mad at the world because you've been a broke, dusty nigga all your life. And you felt like the world owes you because you're a smart dude. You are a smart dude. And you're a teacher. And teachers are really underpaid. Teachers are underpaid. And with an egotistical nigga like that, I'm so smart and I'm not getting no money. So then your ego gets into play. And that's why that, that, that anger, that's where that anger is coming from. Everywhere Umar goes, every single day of his life, they remind Umar of another man, put him on. And there's nothing wrong with that if you're secure. I always give props to Francis Cress Welsing. I learned a lot from Francis Cress Welsing. That was my mentor. I have no problem giving that woman props. Love her to life. That's why I paid for that woman's funeral. I wasn't about, they were about to do a collection to take up for her funeral. I wasn't about to let that happen for somebody who impacted me so much. I would never fix my mouth to say, I'm better than her. More people know me. More people are fucking with me than her. And you do shit like that, brother. You do little sucker shit like that. You dig? And the fact that people remind you every day who puts you on, you try to come up with ways to deal with that psychologically. So now you have to say, well, if y'all going to keep bringing up Hidden Colors, I'm going to say I made Hidden Colors. Well, if it wasn't for me, Hidden Colors, if it, <laughs> Hidden Colors would be nothing without me. So now you got to start lying to yourself. You ain't lying to nobody else, Umar. People know you full of shit. Umar, everybody knows you full of shit. You lying to yourself. You're trying to make yourself feel better. You're trying to make yourself feel better, Umar. You dig? People have found out you're a fraud, man. You, you, you're a fraud and you know you're a fraud. And I don't ever want to fuck with you, ever. You're a bitch nigga. You're a fuck boy. We ain't never doing shit. We ain't never sitting down, talking it out, all that. And, and let me go to the black family. Because I'm just talking straight game now. We're going to talk some real fucking game tonight, man. Because this nigga's never made no money legitimately. Do you think, let's... Family. All you Umar... Anybody who co-signs that fuck nigga. Anybody who co-signs that fuck nigga. Do you honestly think 
Umar Johnson is really going to put together a running, fully operational school. Do you understand nobody is going... Let, let's say, let's just jump to some leaps of logic. Let's jump through some leaps of logic. Let's say he magically has some of the money he stole. Now, all that money has been tricked off. All right? Please understand that. All that money has been tricked off. That money is gone. That money has been tricked the fuck off, man. That money has been tricked off. But let's say in a parallel universe, some money pops up and they go get a little bullshit building somewhere, which will never happen. I'm just giving a hell of a hypothetical. So they get a building somewhere and they try to get the licensing and the permits and all this old shit. And people look at this dude's record, look at all the fraudulent activity and just kind of look at his behavior. His shit is lawsuits waiting to happen. Umar Johnson is a fucking a class action lawsuit waiting to happen. I'm talking from a business perspective. I run businesses. So I know how the laws work and how business works and how employees work. Family. This whole thing in Philly where they're looking at his license. He made it seem like this was something recent. People have found out that the 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 license thing, there was a notice that was dated back in August. So he's known about this whole thing about his license for a long time, but he put it out there publicly now and tried to put a spin on it. This nigga's a master spinner. He's making it seem like, oh, these black folks who don't like me, they're jealous of Papa, and they, they go telling the white man on me. No, that ain't what, that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. He's always trying to spin it like he's a victim because he's so great and people don't like his greatness. They're not looking into his license because some people called up and complained. They're looking into his license based on his own behavior. If you are practicing medicine or psychiatry and it's state sanctioned and you have a crazy nigga out here bucking his eyes I'm the best talking crazy and looking crazy and somebody hires him or they assign him to help some child or help somebody and he does some janky shit the state can be sued because they will point to all of this stupid shit this nigga is doing and be like, hey, y'all, the state of Pennsylvania, y'all saw how this nigga was acting. Why did you let him practice in the state? You know he was off. That nigga's a class action lawsuit waiting to happen. It ain't about they, they just hating on me because I'm the best. No. The nigga's on that bullshit. No, it was all the money there. No, 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 no. The niggas, he's his own worst enemy. He's his own worst enemy. And I, I saw that when he started talking slick and when he started talking that shit about the school. Yeah, the state has to protect the field of psychology. The state has to cover their ass. You have a, a state licensed psychiatrist out here Yelling and sniffing and talking stupid ass shit. And people are justifiably filing suits and claims against fraudulent behavior that he's engaging in. Why y'all telling on me? Yo, Coons telling on me. They hate because I'm so great. And we got to get on that because this whole thing where we're supposed to let dusty ass bummy niggas run amok. And not handle them. That's going to have to leave black society. What's up natural charm? Natural, yeah natural charm is a physician. He's psychologically unfit. This nigga does real reckless bullshit. Talks stupid. He's psychologically unfit. The 
broke bummy nigga. The broke bummy niggerish mentality is coming out. But the thing is, family, we got this thing in black society, and I've been lighting his ass up. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm cool now, because really I'm trying to talk to the family. I'm talking to the family with talking game. I, I, I lit his ass up, roasting his ass, um, was it yesterday or the day before? That went viral, me roasting the fuck out of him. That went viral. But, you know, we're talking some real good game here. But the thing is, look, listen. A lot of folks are saying, oh, come on, brother, don't do him like that. Oh, don't do him like that, brother. Come on, man, y'all got to come together, man. I hate to see two strong brothers and the thing is, you know, y'all said the same shit about Crispy's dumb ass. Or, or maybe y'all were just trolling. But when people say that, two brothers, two powerful brothers, y'all said the same thing about Crispy. What the fuck y'all talking about? Black folks got this thing where we're supposed to just sit there and hold hands with any and every fucking dirt bag. No, we got to stay on code, family. We got to stay on code. What code are you talking about? What, what code are y'all talking about? There is no honor or code among liars and thieves at the table. You dig? Brothers fighting out here. Look, dude, I'm not going to sit up and let no dusty ass bummy nigga. Shout out to Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle tried to alleviate some of the shit. Shout out, shout out to Nipsey. But people saying shit like, come on, brother. Y'all brothers, man, man, we got to learn how to come together. We got to learn how to stop bickering. We got to stop doing this in front of white folks. Whatever that means. What does that mean, doing it in front of white folks? We're in a system of white supremacy, so everything is going to be around white folks. I don't know. I don't even know what that shit means. Niggas like cliches. Niggas like throwing out a bunch of cliches. But the thing is, people talk about what we shouldn't do. We shouldn't bicker. We shouldn't fight. But you notice what I haven't had people say? We shouldn't lie to black society. I haven't heard that once. I haven't heard that once. We shouldn't steal from people in black society. I haven't heard that. We shouldn't con a scam black people in black society. See, the thing is, black people, we got to get this thing, we like liars in black society, unfortunately. We like liars. As long as they can make the lie sound good and we can feel good at the moment. Liars in black society, that's almost like a drug. It's, you get a quick hit, and you feel good for a little while. Feel good for a day or so. But having a motherfucker lie to you, telling you a bunch of shit that they're not going to do, it sounds good temporarily, but then you're back in the same situation. But they got to keep showing up, telling you more lies. They got to keep the lies going. They got to keep circling around. That's what a lot of preachers do. That's why Umar Johnson is a traveling preacher. I said that. And he understands the preacher game. That's why he runs his shit like uh, the regular preacher. That's the audience that he has. He has that church crowd. He has a lot of middle-aged Single mothers. That's his base audience. He tries to act like he has all these goons. But all right, let's 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 get into what we're talking about. All right, now what we're talking about earlier, we're talking about um, how black people, uh, we like being lied to. A lot of black people like being lied to. What's up, Queen Jet Black? Love you too. A lot of black folks like being lied to. Because a lot of times we're told that we cannot do anything. We're told that we can't accomplish anything. And if somebody comes along and they're talking a good game, we'll lend an ear to that because we can fantasize through other people. We can 
listen to other people run their goddamn mouths and we can fantasize through other people. Um, they'll tell us about a world that's better than this. That's what preachers do. That's why people go to church every Sunday because the preacher tells you about Jesus and how Jesus is so kind and so just and Jesus is going to protect you. And Jesus is wonderful and heaven is great and you're going to find some glory if you pray hard enough because when Jesus comes, it's going to be popping. When Jesus comes, Jesus is going to bring milk and honey. When Jesus comes, Jesus is going to have a school with um, nuclear warheads. Jesus is going to come. He's going to have a school with laser beams. When Jesus comes, Jesus is going to have a school with nitroglycerin on the roof. Y you see? You see who that sound like? You see who that sounds like? And Umar, Umoist, he plays on that. He knows the game. He's like, wait a minute. I talk shit about these preachers, but there's money in that preaching. There's money in that. And I'm not legitimate to really make no money So uh, on a legal level. So I got to go out here and get my preach game on. And that's what Umar does. He's a traveling minister. He's using the same game that those jackleg preachers use. Jesus is coming. I need a building fund. I'm not like all these other people who's trying to get your money, but give me your money. You dig? And if you talk a good game and People, even though you know the, the preacher's full of shit, you still go along with it. Because you know, he's saying good things. He makes The preacher makes me feel good while I'm in church. That's why Umar does all those lectures in churches. You know what is that? Ola, is, where's my dude Ola? When I go on tour, I specifically, I do not like doing lectures in churches. People always try to get me to do lectures at churches. And my man Ola's in the room, he'll tell you, I don't know, I don't do lectures, I don't like doing lectures at churches. And that's the reason why, because when you get in a church, people feel like they're obligated to listen to your bullshit. People feel like, okay, now we're about to get into church mode, and it's not about to be about objective thinking. It's all about to be, let me look at the leader, and make the leader's going to make me feel good about myself, and I'm going to go home and do nothing. No, I don't want people in that mind space when I talk to them, when I talk to people, I always look for feedback. I want to know who's who, who does what. I like feedback from people so that we can all strategize. I want to see what your mind is like. I want to see what your expertise is. That's the kind of vibe that I like to have. I don't want to go and tell you, I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I'm the best. I'm Papa. Ain't nobody better than me. I ain't, I, that's not my get down. As long as I don't do shit in churches like that. And I'm an ordained minister, by the way, and I did it so I can go out there in the field, so I can go to other countries and do work. But I like to strategize. I don't want people getting into that church mindset. I don't want you in that church mindset with me. I want you thinking and strategizing with me. That's why I always say, I'm not your leader. I don't play that leader shit. We're all in a system of white supremacy. I'm not egotistical enough to be, uh, I'm your leader. You need to follow me because I'm the greatest. <laughs> Fuck out of here. We're all in a system of white supremacy. and We have to all strategize on how to get out of that system and replace it with justice. So I'm real practical with my stuff. You understand that? Yeah, I'm an ordained minister. I'm an ordained minister. I can perform weddings and funerals and all that shit. You dig? But the thing is, when you have people out here like Umoist, Bumpy Johnson, who's never done anything really legitimate, this is an opportunity now. You've been in my movie. You have to pretend that you somehow legitimized us and we legitimized you and 
you got to go out here scamming for money and scamming people who were legitimized well who I legitimized through legitimize you through rather. these are people who felt like you were legitimized through me so I'm bringing an audience and more people to this dude who's scamming them now you understand so that's the dilemma so a lot of times black folks Umar has also captured some of the church crowd and that church crowd and this is how Umar plays that psychological game on some of those older single mothers. Many of these women are older, raising kids by themselves. So he goes in there talking that the kids ain't, ain't nothing wrong with the kids. They just got ADHD, which is, ain't no daddy at home disease. Ain't no daddy at home. And oh, yes, there ain't no daddy at home. And I'm Papa. I'm, I'm Papa. I'm Papa. You, you dig? You see the mind games? So he goes in there with those women who's the dad ain't around. So he goes in there with, with that papa talk. And no, the hell I ain't. Somebody said, you just as guilty. Nigga, stop. You trolling. I don't, you never heard me talk about it. I'm papa. I'm your daddy. Up in a damn room full of people. But the thing is, when you go run that game on these single mothers and say, you know what, Papa, you know what Papa's going to do? I'm going to open up a school for boys. I'm going to open up a, a black school for boys. The black school for boys is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be the only black school in the world for boys that's going to teach them agriculture. It's going to teach them economics. It's going to teach them military science. All that yelling, you do all that yelling and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know that fuck nigga does all that yelling and if you're a single mother used to being in church yeah he yelling girl yes yes lord jesus you better preach i'm gonna teach you labor i'm gonna teach you agriculture i'm gonna teach you um space exploration i'm taking you to the moon yes umar's gonna take us to the moon All right. Now, I need the money from the church. I need the money. I need this money. And you know when he did that campaign, he put a date on it. I need the money. I have a school that I'm going to get. I need the money by 30 days. I need the money by 30 days. If I don't get the money in 30 days, I'm going to lose the school. I need this amount of money in 30 days. So people are hurrying up, donating the money. They're like, okay, damn, we, we put a whole bunch of money down. Damn, man, the cracker saw that I got all that money, and the cracker took it away. The cracker took the school away right when I got the money. See, the cracker's after me. See, the cracker don't want me to have it. They don't want our boys to have a school. They don't want our girls to learn. The crackers don't want our community to rise. <laughs> you know when he started doing that, I said, okay, the scam is on. The scam is on. All right? That's why he does all that shit in them churches. And now, at this point, the only people who are really fucking with Umar now, the middle-aged church ladies with them single kids, Papa's coming. Papa, will sleep with you. <laughs> I'll be the, a papa to you and your son. You dig? Yeah. <laughs> you, you dig? Because this is the thing. You get a nigga, a broke nigga. Look, before Hidden Colors, Umar Johnson was a broke, pudgy, Florida Evans-shaped nigga who looked like a fucking walrus. Who was checking for Umar fucking Johnson? Let's talk about the ladies for a minute. <laughs> What chicks was checking for that nigga? He was another dusty nigga with a beard running around Philly talking about, I'm the descendant of Frederick Douglass! All right, nigga. <laughs> so that little hustle dried up. You dig? 
<laughs> that hustle dried up. So now you put a motherfucker on a, a movie screen, then all of a sudden, hey, I saw you in that movie. You were great. So I don't look like a walrus? No, you were great. <laughs> I'm a sex symbol. <laughs> This nigga's in a room yelling at himself in the mirror. I'm fat. I'm not fat. I'm voluptuous. I'm not fat. I'm big boned. I'm not fat. <laughs> so this nigga had to talk some sexy into himself. I'm going to go out here and crush these middle aged cookies. You're not, y'all trying to give me the cookies now? I'm trying to crush your cookies. Crush cookies? What the fuck kind of game is that? So now you got this big, goofy, insecure nigga. And, and now you're getting an audience. and you know, Now they choosing up on you a little bit. You don't know how to handle it. So now you're like, let me get some paper. Let me get it all while the getting is good. Let me get it while the getting is good. And that's what it is. He's getting it while the getting is good. And at this point, let me tell you something. That's why I said nobody's talking about him lying. They know he's lying at this point. I mean, uh, we've pointed out so many lies with this dude. It's ridiculous. I mean, this dude lies every fucking week. They know he's lying at this point. You know he's lying. And the problem is too many people are cool with that shit. Just like the reverends at church. Black folks love a motherfucker lying just as long as they talk good. He's a very good talker. But long as he makes you feel good talking all that bullshit that he's not going to do. Just like your baby daddy. That's why he appeals to single mothers. Because your baby daddy come around talking that shit what he's going to do. A lot of y'all got these little Umar Johnson baby daddies. I know I haven't been around for our son. But when I get my income tax, I'm going to take you to Hawaii, and I'm going to take you to Vegas, and I'm going to buy you some furs, and I'm going to buy you a flat screen TV. They make all them bullshit ass promises. You know they lying, but you like hearing your baby daddy lie to you. You dig what I'm saying? We love a motherfucker lying. And y'all know Umar is lying at this point. That's why the response to me roasting this nigga, it's, it hasn't been, hey, you know, why don't we stop liars and, and con men in our community? It's like, why don't y'all stop fighting publicly? See, look at that bullshit logic. Why don't y'all stop bickering? No. Why don't motherfuckers stop lying? Why don't y'all stop having niggas out here lying and we acting like the shit is cool? Black folks, we got to get off that, man. We got to get off these old dirty ass niggas out here. We know they're lying and we cool with it. My thing is, now some people say, how come you didn't say nothing about Umar before? Because I've known that he was fucking fraud for a few years. I just didn't say nothing. The reason why is because if I had said something, y'all would have been like, oh man, come on, brother. Give him a chance. It, it would have been that shit. And I'm like, since this nigga's shitting on me, I'm not going to protect him no more. That's why I haven't had him in my movies no more. I haven't asked him to be in none of my movies no more after I found out how big of a fraud he was and he was talking greasy and all this. Fuck him. That's why I never have him in my movies. And one of the military strategies is if you see somebody losing, don't assist them. You don't help them. If they're already losing, don't step in. I said, I'm going to let this nigga eat himself up. He's going to expose himself. Let him expose himself. And... Most people know he's a fraud at this point, but then you got the, the few. Then you got the few. Like, oh man, we, is, he, is he really lying? No, if a motherfucker's losing, just step out the way. Because the thing is, if you see somebody who's losing, and then you jump in and kind of let everybody know or try to expose them or whatever, they can use that to say, hey, I'm being attacked by this person. They're just trying to attack me. And they can kind of use that and kind of spin it. Nah, no, 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 no. I ain't doing none of that. I, I let you see what I saw back then. And even now, y'all know this nigga's a fraud. You know it. You know it. Everybody's saying that you know this nigga's a fraud at this point. And people are still making excuses. Why are you doing him like that, Tariq? Come on, brother. We need to sit down and talk it out. 
We got to stop this thing. What am I going to talk to Umar about? What are we going to talk about? There's a point where you just have to stop fucking with certain people. Umar is a known scammer, con artist, thief at this point. What are we going to talk to this nigga about? There's nothing to talk about. When this nigga's been just caught frauding over and over again, ain't no talking no more. Talk it out means let's do something so he can lie to us some more. You know what that is? That's let's do something so he can lie to us some more. We like it. We know he's lying, but we kind of like his lies. It's like the preacher can do no wrong, that type of shit. That's why he likes that preacher mentality. He likes that preacher vibe. That's why he likes that preacher shit. The preacher can do no wrong. Just like with Bishop Eddie Long's church. Bishop Eddie Long. Now, Bishop Eddie Long's church, they knew Bishop Eddie Long was out there fucking them boys. That's just what it is. I don't care if y'all offended by that. Y'all know Bishop Eddie Long was fucking them boys. All the lawsuits and payouts, paying millions of dollars for fucking these boys at the church. That's what happened. See, we got a lot of folks don't even want to say it like that openly. He was fucking some boys at the church. People still going up in the church. People still going on up in the church. People went up in Eddie Long's church. This motherfucker died and withered away from alleged AIDS. And people still in there in denial. People up in Eddie Long's church in denial about this nigga fucking boys. That man went up in there fucking boys. Allegedly caught AIDS. Up in church skinny than a motherfucker. Talking about I'm a vegan now. Oh yes Reverend. Yes, Reverend. I mean, some people, you don't want to know the damn truth. Y y let's be real. It wasn't a shit. <laughs> okay. You, who said that wasn't AIDS? Come on, man. Come on, dude. That looked like some AIDS-related complications. Understand. They might, no, he, he died of pneumonia. Triggered by AIDS. You did you always when you get AIDS, you die of something else. What AIDS does is fu it fucks up your immune system so the other diseases come in. So if they say, okay, well he has some kind of rare disease, uh, it's called trichotillomy epilepsy. That's what he died of. He got that shit because he had AIDS. You thought it was cancer. Brought on by AIDS. Shit. That wasn't no goddamn cancer. You did? But there was pictures of Eddie Long on a damn treadmill talking about he's eating vegetables. <laughs> okay. Come on, man. The church, that church mentality will keep you in denial for the longest. you just sitting in there all types of shit going on and you just sitting in there in denial because y'all got that code of silence that's supposed to happen with the church crowd. Umar plays on that. And we got this thing, we ain't supposed to call out that nigga's fuckery? Hell no. Fuck that. Especially if you're going to come at a nigga like me. Nigga who didn't, you eating off me, you done scam people because I put you on and you use that to scam people and you fuck the game up. Now you make, you done sullied Put a stain on the brand. You put a stain on my brand. People look at me fucked up when this goofy ass nigga does shit. Somebody said a whole Joe Flo say that's for he had a whole heap of AIDS. That's fucked up. By the way, yeah, we are bad. We are. We are. We're not just on him. We're just talking, and I'm using him as a vehicle to talk to black society. We're going deep tonight. It ain't just about him, but it's a mentality that we got to we gotta get this mentality out of our brains where we can't check fuckery, that we've normalized fuckery, that lies and thieves and dirtbags and pervs can just run among us, and we don't do nothing. I'm from a whole different era. 
or not just an era, but a whole different society where we didn't let shit like that go on. I, did y'all see a video? It was a video that went viral recently, last in a few week a few weeks ago. There was this 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 girl. I think she was a teen, but she was at a family function, and she exposed one of the family members who molested her. It was a very powerful thing. She, there was a family function, and she was like, hey, y'all, this is such and such, my, um, um, this and that. Right now, I'm at a family function, and I'm, I'm right here to the, with the dude who molested me when I was six. So she put the camera on the dude. He's sitting there. Eating. Why you molest me when I was six? Remember when you molest me when I was a kid? You remember you did all this? And he's just sitting up there. And ain't nobody saying nothing. That's a that was powerful, man. It was a funeral, right? Okay. Yeah, that was powerful. And I take my hat off to that young sister for having that courage. I take my hat off to that sister. That that was powerful, man. Because the family, y'all know. Y'all got little dirty ass niggas like that in the family, but you don't want to say nothing. You know you got little pervy, dirty ass niggas in the family, but nobody wants to say nothing. And we do that too much in black society. We know we got thieves and liars and, 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 and dirt bags, but we just kind of let them run around and nobody ain't supposed to smack them the fuck up and check them and... I'm from a place, man, where we used to G-check niggas over stupid shit. One of the reasons why, like I said on the last broadcast, I've been in the game publicly putting out products successfully for almost 20 years. In those 20 years, you've never heard anybody say, I defrauded them, I scammed them, I done done something deceitful or ripped anybody off. Never heard that. Never heard that about Tariq Nasheed ever. You never heard somebody say, I, didn't, um, I stole some money or I owe him money. Nothing. Nothing. Because I come from a place where out here, L.A., in that street environment, doing that type of shit, that shit would get you fucking killed. That shit get you fucked up where I came from. So I learned early on, I got to be straight up and down. If I want to operate out here and really handle business out here like that, if you want to be in this type of environment, you got to have some kind of integrity about what you mean and what you say. And you got to say what the fuck you mean and do what the fuck you say you want to do. And I've kept that with me. You dig? But... In these other communities, you can lie and, and bullshit people, run game, con them. You dig? He said, I keep all the proceeds from Hidden Colors. Motherfucker, it's my business. That's my business. Just like he kept all the proceeds from that non-existent school. That is not business. That's thievery. You dig? You see how he's always trying to project shit onto other people about somebody's proceeds. He cannot talk about any proceeds, about anything. I created a product, sold a product, and that's what it is. He stole money from people, said he was going to do something, didn't do it, and cursed everybody out who asked him about it. How dare you ask Papa? Man. Man, man, man. Man. But we got to get off this thing where we are accepting of liars and people that we know are liars and just doing shit, just lying all the time. Like, like, pop like this. Smith. That Papa Smurf shit, this ain't gonna get us nowhere. That Papa Smurf shit ain't gonna get us nowhere. You feel me? Hold on. Yeah. That Papa Smurf shit. Nah, I got this. I got this. I... Y'all see that? That Papa Smurf thing ain't gonna work. You... Now, that was Umar when he was going after Sarah Sudan Seti. 
Umar Johnson did a live stream with this clown ass nigga. Acted like he was on the phone talking to imaginary goons. I mean, let's, let's, let's just look at the seriousness of that stupid shit that you just saw right there. And that's indicative of this nigga right here. This nigga picked up a phone like he was talking to some imaginary goons. And then the phone rang and he quickly hung it up. That right there says everything you need to know about that dude. How can you make excuses for that? That's his character, family. Let's just talk real. I'm, you see, we're just talking real shit. That's that man's character. That's his character to do some shit like that. Some corny fuckboy shit like that. Fronting like he had goons. And what was the ring? What was the ringtone? What was the ringtone on the phone? Was it Chris Brown? What was the shit? 3LW? What was that? <laughs> Come on, man. even if you're a, a, a fan of his, when something like that, when you see that, how do you feel? How do you feel when you see a nigga do some fraudulent shit like that? Like, hold, hold, hold on, what? Yeah, 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 no. What? Uh-huh. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. No, 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 no. I got this. I got this. You know, I got that. I'm getting a little tired of you broken promises, promises. Looking oh, oh. at your pages, seeing to Hello? Hello? Uh, my, my phone is tripping. My, my, hello? <laughs> that nigga phone had 3LW on it. Come on, family. Come on, man. Which what we? This is what we. This is where we are now. This is what we. We've accepted shit like this. This is what we doing right now. <laughs> are we that desperate? Uh, this is this is what we accepting right now, man. Come on, man. We can't. Uh, so I'm the fucked up dude for checking niggas like this, dude. <laughs> You got three LW goons. <laughs> this nigga, come on, man. <laughs> this is what we got out here, man. Hold on. That's what y'all, y'all co-signing this moist nigga, dude. Hold on. Hold on. This is Umar. Are these my goons? Look, look, no, 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 I got this. No, I don't need you because I'm going to handle these niggas myself. I got... Hello? 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 Let me turn my ringer down. Hello? Oh, man. Come on, fam. Oh. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, <laughs> talks like a duck, it's a fucking duck, man. It's a damn duck. My God. You did, but family, we got to be in a position where we say, no lies, no bullshit. We find out you scamming and hustling and conning. We, 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 there's nothing to talk about. Y'all, please don't don't come to me talking about I need to sit down and have a conversation, have a phone call, have a sit down with fucking frauds, man. No thank you. No thank you. No thank you. If it looks like a walrus, eats like a walrus, and crawls like a walrus. It's a goddamn walrus, man. You dig? <laughs> and again, like at this point, Umoist, and somebody said he's still posting up shit, and he's so desperate at this point. It's, you know, I kind of low key, because he has no real comeback, so I low key kind of feel sorry for this nigga. Because he's such a fuckboy. But 
I want to tell my people who roll with Tariq Nashi, and I want to say this genuinely, because especially my people who, who were down before the Hidden Colors series, because even before the Hidden Colors series, you know, we, we talked about that. We, the genesis was, was right here. I'm on YouTube now, but I, I was on Ustream, and a lot of my Ustream people are in here now. And we sat here and we talked about doing a movie. We talked about what it was going to be about. I got some ideas from the family. We talked about what it was going to be about. And if y'all, some of you guys who have been listening to my Ustream for like a decade, when I started doing the talking about the Hidden Color series, I just got off tour. I was on tour. And I was at my home I, with, I think I had my red curtains. Y'all used to clown my red curtains in the back. I just got off tour. And Kickstarter was something new. And we were talking about what we need to do, what kind of projects we need to do about black education, black empowerment. And I said, I'm going to do a movie about black history and just tell it in my own way. And in my pocket, you, you guys know it was um, no, it was 2010. Fly since it was 2010, because I remember because I came from I was in Australia, I was all over the place, and I came up with twenty thousand dollars on um, Kickstarter. I came up with that number because at the time, I just got off tour. I I came right from the airport to do my live UStream show that Sunday, and. I had $20,000 in my pocket and I pulled it out on air and I said, look, I got 20 grand right here. If you guys can match me, I'll do this movie. If you guys, there's a new thing called Kickstarter and if you guys can match me with this 20 stacks, I'll do the movie. And within a month, people got the 20,000, people donated. My people, it was my people on Ustream who got that popping. Then we did the movie and everything was history. And I have to say, I have to apologize for Umar Johnson because that's my responsibility. I'm the captain of the ship. I'm apologizing to all the people who invested in the Hidden Colors franchise, the people who were moved by the Hidden Colors franchise, the people who are being educated by the Hidden Colors franchise. Because now this dude, yes, Sabir Bay, that was another one, the two dudes from Philly. But now you got this dude, he just couldn't handle the notoriety. I tried my best. I don't want to hear all that, man. We got to come together. We got to work it out. I tried my best to try to, this, you, you can only do so much for people, man. You can lead a goddamn horse to water, but you can't make it goddamn not start bucking and kicking all over the place. You dig? I tried my best to try to help the cat out when I saw some of the fuckery happening. I tried my best to be neutral. I tried my best to kind of protect the community to a certain degree from that type of behavior. But and I've distanced myself. That's why I just didn't have them in no more of my movies. That was the reason why. I just didn't have them in no more of the movies. You dig? Unfortunately, we, we created a monster. You dig? We created a bit moist, Florida Evans-shaped, walrus-looking, herpes-infested monster. We, we, we got a fucking monster out there that we created, unfortunately. And that monster is trying to destroy the community, to be honest. I'm going to be, we got to be very honest. We're going to talk real shit. It's Dr. Ben's birthday. It is Dr. Ben's birthday. Shout out to Dr. Ben. It is Dr. Ben's birthday. It is Dr. Ben's birthday. Shout out to Dr. Ben, scholar warrior. Speaking of Dr. Ben, if some of y'all know, some of y'all don't know. What's up, Lady Smith? You say, I'm destroying the community? Who, 
who's destroying the community? Speaking of Dr. Ben, I didn't like how, and that's another thing. You know, people like Dr. Ben was in a nursing home. You know, his money was janky. You know, he was they, he was in a nursing home in his last days. And he was in that nursing home and he didn't have like a lot of basic necessities. You dig? And I'm like, wow, he was out there in New York. And I'm like, all those people that Dr. Ben touched. And I know some people had some agreements with him, some disagreements with him or whatever. But he shouldn't let Dr. Ben go out like that. See, the thing is, a lot of people talk. A lot of people don't do shit. They, they give you praise. Real superficial praise. Because a lot of y'all know, I, I, I sent a lot of money up there to Dr. Ben. I sent thousands of dollars up there to Dr. Ben to make sure he got some of the stuff that he needed. I got receipts on that if you ever need to see him. I keep all my receipts. You dig? But stuff like that. Oh, late, oh, she's trolling. Okay, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Some of these known trolls just saying stupid shit to be saying it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Don't worry about that. You know, some people just say stupid shit to be saying in the chat room. You dig? Man. But the thing is, he said, talk about the NOI practicing Scientology. I think that's that's more of a allying yourself with people for, I think, economic and tax reasons. I think it, it has more to do with that. I think that, and I don't know the ins and outs. I'm just, this is my conjecture. Because, you know, I did a, uh, a lecture out here in L.A. And with the Nation of Islam, they were sponsoring it. And it was at one of the Scientologist temples down in, um, L.A., actually. And um, some brothers from the nation hooked that up. Shout out to Brother Tony Muhammad and all those people out here. You dig? But like I said, man, unfortunately, Umoist is very detrimental for any kind of black progress in black society. Me roasting this nigga, you're gonna, for, for the naysayers, which are few, most of the naysayers are just trolls, but for the few naysayers, because most people agree with me, by the way, understand this. Notice how you haven't seen too many prominent people come to Umar's defense. Have y'all noticed that? Notice y'all haven't seen nobody really come to Umar's defense. Nigga, do you know my phone and email has been lighting up with people saying, thank you. Prominent people saying, thank you. Crushing that nigga. He was always on that bullshit. You understand that? Understand when Umar's own dad because I has to cop flee that Umar's dad is a good dude. His dad has to be like, hey, my son, hey, I'm sorry, guys. Your dad has to kind of apologize for you. You understand? Ooh, man, I'm learning. Dude. That's why I'm cool now because I'm like, the shit that I got on Umar now, Umar, he, Umar's like, I got some stuff on the week now. He, um, no, you don't, Umar. You ain't fooling nobody. You ain't got nothing on me because there's nothing to have on me, dude. I don't do shit. I'm square than a motherfucker. I'm a square married dude. I'm square as shit. I don't do shit. What you going to do? What you got on me? I be at Jama Juice with my fucking kids. What you got on me? Nothing. You don't know no street niggas that I was in the game with back in the day. You don't know no street niggas that I know. So what you got? You don't have nothing. That's just selling wolf tickets. That's bullshit. Then he'll just make up something. Like, well, I heard that you were shoplifting in China with the ball, ball son. You know, you know, and then they can just make up some stupid shit. But, nigga, you, Umar, if you're listening, Umar, don't sell no wolf tickets, dude. And I'm not, I'm not going to go back and forth because, again, I said I'm not going to talk about it, but I'm really talking to the family. But, Umar, my nigga, motherfuckers don't like you out here, dude. I didn't know it was that damn severe. 
Our people can't really stand your ass other than the, the single mothers who you fucking and talking about you're going to be a papa today, son, and all that shit. Nigga, I, don't, I got motherfuckers in the UK sending me shit about Umar. They don't fuck with him. That nigga was doing some slick shit over in Africa with those little tours over in Ghana. I done heard you done did some slick shit over there, dude. I done heard you did some slick shit over there. You you rubbing motherfuckers the wrong way. You burning bridges over there doing a little shiesty shit. Yeah, Umar's dad does seem like a real sincere dude. And the dad seems like he's been going through Umar's stupid shit for a long time. So the dad seems like he's used to it. You, you, you know your kids. You know when your kids are fucked up. You dig? So Umar, please don't start selling wolf chickens, dude. I'm the receipt king, my dude. I'm the receipt king. That's why, dude, I'm going to let you crumble on your own. I'm going to let you crumble on your fucking own, dude. There's so much shit I can put out about you. For example, I'm going to be a little petty and give an example. Not nothing. For example, just so you don't know I'm bullshitting. Ask Lou more about the time Rock Newman almost whooped his ass. Yeah, Umar. Ask Umar about that. Rock Newman almost whooped Umar's ass up in D.C. Rock Newman stepped to Umar, and Umar backed down like a bitch. Rock Newman is about that life. Rock Newman's old school. And Umar was, you know, he, you know, he shows up with a couple of niggas, and he's talking kind of greasy or whatever, and he was talking a little slick to Rock Newman. Rock Newman moved a little furniture around on that nigga like, hey, what's up? And Umar stood back on that shit. Rock Newman, I told you, Rock Newman be hemming motherfuckers up. Nigga, Rock Newman is the real fucking deal. That's why I know Umar ain't about that smoke. All that, <laughs> we can get in the box. Hey, he tweeted some shit about getting in a boxing. This is what this nigga put up on um, Instagram. Because I told that nigga all that, fuck all that theatrics. We can get in the ring. This is what he posted on Instagram. This is how goofy this nigga is. And I said, look, fuck a ring, nigga. If you see me, it's on site. I ain't doing all that old show shit, which you ain't going to show up for anyway. You'll take the money and run, nigga. If we set up a damn fight, you just take the money and run somewhere and hide out at the imaginary school. This nigga put up some shit. Hold on. Ten rounds inside of a real ring, real gloves, free, open to the public. Donations will be accepted. Repay the Hidden Colors donors for Miss Lady Lips. Who the fuck is that? Oh, I guess Miss I'm Lady Lips. Using their money to pay white folks to make conscious DVDs. Okay. Miss Lady Lips. So this nigga's insults aren't even creative. You know, Rock Newman almost tapped that ass. And you ain't do shit. You ain't about that 10 rounds. Nigga, your chunky ass can't go no 10 rounds of nothing. You eat 10 rounds of pizza. What you gonna do for 10 rounds? You not gonna do 10 rounds of nothing. Pay the donors back for what? They got what they wanted. The donors got what they wanted from me. You need to pay your donors back, nigga. My donors got exactly what they said they were going to get from me on time without them having to go back and forth with me. My donors got everything they said I said they were going to get. They knew what they were getting from me. And nigga, Lady Lips? Miss, that, that's your insult to me, Miss Lady Lips? Now, speaking of lips, what you doing about them herpes sores on your mouth? If we going to talk about lips... Big Papa. You nigga got herpes sores on his lips. And I seen some people, some of his single mother followers, making excuses for herpes. That's that Eddie Long shit. If you go on my, my Instagram, they were making excuses for herpes. They were like, leave Umar alone. One out of six people have herpes, so that ain't even unusual. <laughs> well, go kiss him then. <laughs> Knock yourself out with the Hotep herpes. 
These herpes are from Ogun. These herpes are from the, the Orishas. He gonna tell you the herpes sores are from the Dogon. Go ahead and knock yourself out then if his herpes ain't so bad. And let me stop saying hotel. James Small got on my ass about saying hotel. All in because I, I, I'm brother Small. I don't say it in a negative way. I don't say hotel in a negative. James Small, that's our word, brother. Hotel is our word, brother. That's our word. We gotta we can't sell in that word, brother. That's our word, brother. I know, brother Smalls. I know. <laughs> Come on, Bumpy Johnson. If, if some of your ladies out there want to get them. They want to get them sores on their mouth and knock yourself out. <laughs> and he accepts, because Umar be doing some shit, then spin it. Well, these aren't really herpes sores. See, what it is, th this is the energy coming out of my system because I'm a descendant of um, King Tut. And I'm a descendant of Nefertiti. And that's some of that Egyptian spirit coming out of my lips because I'm spitting so much hot fire. I'm spitting so much hot fire, the fire is burning my lips because of the ether coming from the universe of the pyramids. <laughs> okay, okay, Papa. <laughs> Y'all believe this nigga spinning shit? So, ladies, get yourself checked out. You fuck with this nigga. Don't go, don't go back with a, a, a positive herpes test on him. He'll get all his goons and say, Umar, I got a sore on my lip. The, the doctor didn't say it was it was a Kundalini mark. They said it was herpes simplex 10. He's a liar. That's just another cracker. That's the same kind of cracker that's trying to keep me from getting my school. Those crackers are always trying to lie on us. You know what? Get out of here. I'm going to call my goons. Hello? 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 I, I I got this. I, I got this. Hello? 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 I gotta turn my wigger down. <laughs> They're just trying to get my license because they jealous! <laughs> I'm a descendant! <laughs> I'm gonna be doing that shit nonstop. Nigga, y'all lucky. It's the holidays. I couldn't order a fucking puppet on time. Yo! I couldn't order a puppet on time. <laughs> oh god, because y'all know a puppet is coming. I ain't gonna fucking front. There's gonna be a there's gonna be a puppet. Cause I'm too fucking petty to just all the way. I'm gonna let it go a little bit, but I'm too fucking petty to just let it all the way go. You <laughs> did, <laughs> but oh man, but like I said, dude, my nigga Rod Newman was about to put them paws on that bitch nigga, so he ain't about that life. Umar stab, he didn't do shit. That nigga ain't about that life, man. Dude ain't about that life whatsoever. You dig? But, again, I ain't gonna harp too much on it. I done said what I had to say. Don't be hitting all your... And, uh, and a lot of these comments are really trolls. These are troll bot comments because I look on my Instagram and it's, it's really a variation of the same comment. So basically, it's a bunch of, it's like some kind of troll bot. You know how trolls bot program, they, they program a couple of words in and they just say different variations of the same words or it's whatever. And another thing, shout out to my man, um, Jermaine Broadnax. Jermaine, he does research for the Hidden Color series and he works with me on that. And he's been calling out Umar's bullshit for a long time. Jermaine said a while back how on Instagram, Umar bought like 100,000, 200,000 followers. He said that, like, just overnight, Umar had, like, 200,000 followers overnight. He called that out a while back. So all those followers Umar has on Instagram, at least 200,000 of them are fake. 
That's the long and short of it. My man, my, my dude, the, the real black historian on Instagram, he called that a long time ago. You dig? Well, this is why family, I mean, we are in here heavy tonight, man. Shit, we're in here heavy. We're in here heavy, just like herpes. But, <laughs> oh, let me, let me shout my movies out, man. Um, 1804, right now, man, speaking of hot movies, 1804, man, killing the game. 1804movie.com. Somebody said, well, my beard is probably musty. I probably smell like pussy. <laughs> With herpes on it. <laughs> man. But 1804movie.com. Y'all need to go get 1804movie.com. Shout out to my lovely wife. My lovely wife's birthday was Friday. My beautiful, beautiful queen, Lexi. Her birthday was um, Friday. We went to Mr. Child's and something I ate at Mr. Child's. Fuck my gout up. <laughs> Mr. Child's will be having all that lobster and shrimps and shit. I got my lovely wife a lobster. And I don't know what they had in my rice, but nigga, I woke up, couldn't walk. <laughs> my shit was fucked up. But also go to um, HiddenColorsFilm.com. HiddenColorsFilm.com. Y'all need to get Hidden Colors too, so y'all can see that, that herpes bump on Umar's fucking face that we tried to shade out. <laughs> A lot of folks are like, ooh, damn, I saw it. <laughs> People are like, shit. But, um... I'm, I'm very legit with anybody who does anything with me. That's just, that's how you're supposed to get down. How many of y'all follow you? Everybody, y'all should be following me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. On Instagram, go to Tariq Elite. Tariq Elite. Tariq Elite on Instagram. And Tariq Nasheed on Twitter. But on Instagram, Tariq Elite. You dig? You dig? Is it more receipts? No, I'm cool. I'm cool. I could throw out more receipts, but I'm 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 chilling. Because see now, I don't now I don't want to be a bully. People are already like, oh you got him, dude. You got him. You already got him, man. Leave him alone. All right, all right. You already won, man. Leave him alone. You already won. You already won. I got that. I got that. Yeah, I, I never claimed to be no leader, so you can cut that leadership off with me. That leadership, I ain't nobody's leader. I'm petty as fuck. I'm just another victim of white supremacy. I'm just bold, and I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. Nothing more, nothing less. You dig? Fix my sound. How's my sound? My sound good? Can y'all guys hear me? Can y'all hear me? man but understand in black society we got to get off this thing where we let people run amok and we're not supposed to do anything i'm not we got this thing because we get that from being around the white supremacists they can just beat up on us and we're supposed to just not say nothing and just take it see a lot of folks if i'm not scared to go after the white supremacists i'm not going to be scared after no coons or frauds you dig i go after white supremacists every day you dig? And I, I step to them, too, and let them know that it can be about that bullshit if they need it. Those alt-right dudes threaten me all the time, and I let them know. Y'all know the fuck I am. All those dudes, Baked Alaska, all those dudes always threaten me, and I let them know, hey, we, it's on site then. It's on fucking site then. You dig? Not trying to be no tough guy, but I ain't the nigga that's that people are going to just run up on with the dumb shit, though. You dig? The niggas ain't going to be talking reckless and talking about what they going to do. You talk about doing all that, but then you want to show and prove. You're going to have to do it. I ain't going to be back and forth talking about what we going to do, what we uh, nah. <clears throat> What's up, network? Get him. Network not found. You trolling. Man. You dig? But um, anyway, I'm about to get up out of here, check on the kids, check on the wife. 
But again, y'all go get Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, and 4. Get all the movies. I, and I don't want you guys to be discouraged about the bullshit that's happening. You dig? I, I want us to stick because this, this is why I was silent for a long time because I knew that this type of shit would, would hurt black society, especially with a film series like Hidden Colors. Trust me, I don't want to have to smash on nobody from the film. Even when I had to go in on Sabir Bay, I didn't want to have to do that. But the dude was just doing too much reckless shit. I mean, just not only fucking up the brand, just fucking up the economics of it. You dig? See, you got a lot of these dudes who, especially the dudes who are closer to my age, it's that jealousy thing, man. Just like my man Damon Dash said, you help a nigga, man, shit. A lot of times they, they will resent you. But I don't want people to get discouraged by the fuckery of Umar because that's what it is. I don't want to hear this shit about y'all too tripping. Y'all too need to stop. Y'all too fuck all that y'all too shit. That's what I really don't like. All that y'all too. Y'all both acting up. Y'all can kiss my ass with that shit. I ain't going to just sit up and just year after year let a nigga just go reckless and just fuck up the whole brand of what I built. And what we've all built with stupid ass shit. Scamming, robbing, lying, herpes sores all over the fucking place. Then trashing me and we just supposed to sit there and not do nothing. And when you say, hey, enough is enough. Hey, man, y'all both tripping. Nah. Nah, no, no, no. Y'all miss me with that y'all both tripping shit. That's why black folks love abusive shit. Y'all love an abusive ass nigga running around. Oh, fuck, nah. Nah, nah, nah. It's a new year on the... Um, Happy New Year on the East Coast, man. Happy New Year on the East Coast. All my East Coasters. Oh, let me go in here. It's about to be New Year's. I got to be in here with my wife for the New Year. Much respect. Happy New Year, man. This is going to be a great year. This new year is going to be a great year. It's going to be a powerful year. We're going in strong. That's why we got to leave the bullshit behind. I'm flushing the toilet on the 2017 bullshit. We got to flush the toilet on that shit. It's a new year. We got to clean house. And bring the new year in with real empowerment and real tangible things. No herpes. <laughs> you dig? Not sh and it's, there's some people out there who might have herpes. I ain't shitting on you. I'm not shitting on you at all. I'm not shitting on you. You dig? But that nigga I am. Because I had to hide that nigga's festering herpes blister. And this nigga's ungrateful. And then, Umar, leave your herpes. <laughs> At your non-existent school. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna try to do a coon train um, in February or March. I'm gonna, I gotta holler at the comedy club and see what's popping. A um, lot of good things, man. 2018. I'm going back to the UK. Shout out to Eric, the promoter. They're gonna bring. It's gonna be me and Joy DeGru. We're doing something out there. So we're going to be doing something out there about relationships. So that's going to be nice. I love that sister. I absolutely love Joy DeGru. You dig? <clears throat> but we're going to keep doing it, man. Keep putting together great projects. A lot of good stuff we're going to keep doing. Watch out for the three LW goons. All right? We're not going to have, we're going to leave the three LW goons behind. You did. When am I coming to D.C.? I got to do something in D.C. That's like when I do my lectures, when I go on the road, I like to make it an event, like a big event, make, make it fly. You know, I'm not trying to circle around every other month to pick up some little church money and then go, go to the Howard Johnson Hotel at the, the Dulles Airport so I can look at the mirror. You are the best! You are the greatest! Man. 
But again, for 2018, for, I'm going to let y'all know how I want to roll. We're going to get rid of, we're going to not deal with no damn coons, thieves, frauds, fakers. There's a reason why all this shit came out at the end of the year. The universe is telling you, leave the bullshit back. This is the universe telling you, leave Umoist, Papa, the pimp of PayPal, leave his shit behind. Leave that type of shit behind. Leave the fraudulent behavior behind. Family, understand, if you're donated to a school, you lost your money. We're going to have to come to the reality. Don't stop the fuck shit. You lost your money. It is what it is. You lost your goddamn money. This nigga con you. We got you. And they about to strip this nigga's license, and he's about to do all a whole lot of hope. <laughs> Hollering in it. It's the, the cracker. I need y'all to support me. It's the cracker. Fuck all that. The Hidden Color series is still great. It ain't our job to save dirty niggas who are lost. Some people are great at one time. Something happens, they fall off. You dig? I guess I am talking about Bumpy Johnson. Shout out to um, R.I.P. to uh, Combat Jack. Real good brother out there in New York, Combat Jack. My brother, man, real good dude. I was on his show, man. A lot of people say me um, that Combat Jack episode that we did was one of the best. Very good dude. I, um, I know they had a little uh, acknowledgement for him out there in Brooklyn, I think this past Saturday. You dig? Yeah, but damn all that, the pimp of PayPal, all that bullshit, now, that, that's going to have to go. Nigga, when, you, when, a, when somebody's karma is eating their ass up, let it, let it. Fuck all that. We ain't got to go out there and help them and lift them up. And uh, If somebody's karma is coming to smack them up, let it deal with them. But understand, with our films, it's impacting the world. The films are impacting the world. I don't want Umois 